not only it's a great way, but it's a necessity. The training hours are being dramatically reduced. We are now delivering people who are emergency competent. But once you looked at planned surgery, it takes quite a lot of skill more to do. What you see here is the state of the art of the regular simulation. So what you will teach people to do is basic surgical skills, like getting an airway secure, getting blood or fluid into a patient. Now, once you get a bit further down the line and you want to teach surgical techniques, you will have to do a bit more. So you could go to animal labs, which is what is done occasionally on the continent. But that is very time consuming, very expensive. We're overcoming this by building a model in virtual reality that will allow you to have tactile feedback of what you do and to actually do exactly the same procedure as, in our case, a neurosurgeon would do. So There's three parts to this simulation. There's what you actually see, which is a computer screen driven by a, um, a rendered image, just like the CGI that you get in movies or games. There's a, a mechanical simulation that underlies that, that uh, models what happens to the real situation when you poke it, prod it, um, cut it and so on. We've also got devices called haptic devices that are simulations of the tools. They are handles connected to motors and sensors that give you physical feedback that makes it feel as though you're actually poking, prodding and, fully, and pulling a physical object such as the brain or other organ of the body. Two things that are crucial in simulation. One is the cost. These things are very expensive. It's not a standalone piece. You see you need an entire setup. You need a console. You need people behind the console. You need to be looked after while you do this. You have to be able to replicate things. So there are a limited number of scenarios that you can run through this. And it's not at infinitum. If you do it in VR, you have a lot more possibilities to do. You can run more scenarios. And it is also very accessible time spent using our simulator would hopefully count towards hours of training and making you a better surgeon, just as airline pilots have hours in their simulators to count towards their ultimate qualification as being a fully qualified airline pilot. Um, we hope that if the simulator is sufficiently realistic, which we hope ours is, that that could count you know, very much in the same kind of way. And they are becoming more popular. There's more pressure from insurance companies and, and other medical bodies to begin to implement these properly, just as you would implement uh, a flight simulation. Uh, eventually, I, we believe the technology will become well established. At this point in time, it needs to be proven, it needs to be demonstrated to surgeons and get their approval, and then we can move further. For that, we need a lot of funding to get the technology into the marketplace. Mm -hmm.